Hello everyone. It's Sunday the 19th September. The time is 20 past 3 p.m. and the temperature is 29 degrees. And as you can see, we are in Tampanis East, um, just right by the um, MRT station, which is down there. We'll be walking that way in a moment, but I have to come here and see these quite unique looking uh, HDP buildings which I haven't seen before. You can see some of the more usual designs on that side. And then on my left here, these you can find everywhere. But I think I haven't seen this one before where you have sort of a tile going through all the buildings. And I was on the bus going through here and that just seemed like a very interesting design to start with. And then there's this little square as well. Um, which even says Tampadis East. But let's start walking. We're going to start by walking past the MRT station. And then we'll turn on to Tampadis Avenue 2. We'll keep walking. We'll go find a little temple on our way. Walk some of the streets in this uh, residential area. And then walk by the uh, Tampadis mall and the art company's hub to finish this walk in the park just behind them. That's the plan for this Sunday. And as you can see, we're in another one of these uh, residential areas, neighborhoods, which are basically planned around the idea that you could live here without without really going anywhere. So you don't need a car to get to the uh, city center because everything will be right here next to where you live. So on my right there, you can start seeing the uh, company's East MRT station. And of course, these areas also tend to be well served by buses. As you can see right here. They're on the other side. Right next to the HGP building is the station. And we're pretty much surrounded by these uh, residential areas here. We're in the northeastern coast of Singapore at the moment. And this area is part of the uh, Panamera. district. And Tampanis could be considered the uh, regional center for the east. Tanamera means red land, if I understand correctly. And Tampanis itself I believe that's uh, from a Malay word for a specific kind of a uh, tree. Let's have a look at the station building on that side with the buses going. You see how many buses these areas have. It's a very nice outdoors area. It's outside that HDB. And a really lovely green areas as well. So 
So we're kind of starting from the more residential part and walking towards the shopping centers and the more central part of town. And we're now turning to Tampanese Avenue 2. This is all part of the uh, MRT station that you're seeing here. And it's basically entrances all around these uh, junctions as well, which is really useful. You don't have to really use the crossings there to uh, get to the station. You can get there pretty much from anywhere in here. And with all the residential buildings around, that's definitely a good thing. It would be pretty easy to get to the MRT from any of them, from any direction. You got bike stands here as well. We've got a covered walkway, which is pretty common as well around these MRT stations in the res residential areas. And I think they're just uh, planning to build more and more of these. They're very convenient for both rain and the intense sunshine that Singapore has. If I understand correctly, the uh, company's name was originally based on the river in the area that had those uh, trees growing around it. And I think the uh, English name for those trees is Ironwood. I'm not sure because I'm not really familiar with it. but. That's what the uh, translation comes up out of. Let's turn to Tampanese Street 23. There's the Tampanese East Community Club on the other side. And uh, more some, a little bit more unique looking HDB buildings, I guess. Maybe you are very familiar with this style, but I don't think I've seen it in other areas so far. Maybe it's a little bit older design. I'll need to look that up because they are quite, actually quite beautiful, I think. That's a little food center on the other side. So this street should get us to uh, Tampany Street 21. It's like many of the other residential areas as well. The street names and the new names are just based on the name of the neighborhood. 
which can be helpful if you think about it in terms of the layout and then not helpful if you lost and forget which number you want, <laughs> obviously, which happened to me, I think, in, in one neighborhood already. Suddenly for a Sunday afternoon, I saw quite a few people out. The COVID cases are at a high at the moment, over a thousand cases a day. So that's affecting uh, people's decision to go out and spend time in shopping malls, shopping centers, restaurants at least from uh, what they are saying online. So, once we get to those areas, we'll be able to see if it looks quieter. It's a really nice green area over there with lots of plants. Very cute residential house over that side with some shops on the lower floor. And most of these buildings are quite high, just sort of maximizing the number of residents, I guess. But these uh, smaller ones are pretty cute as well and they, they then too often have those shops on the lower floors. It's a very nice looking uh, probably old sign but those blocks over there identical one on the other side there as we get to uh, Street 21. And we'll take a bite here. That's some bamboo over there. Fairly high as well. a little like sign for companies east just let's have a look down there on street 21 <laughs> and I think we have more of those plant buildings that I started from ahead of us And the reason that we're making this, what might seem like a detour, is uh, to see the temple that's just ahead. So Street 24 here would take us back to uh, Tampanis East. There's something really unique and beautiful about these, these buildings, which definitely seem like a little bit older style. <laughs> I 
you could just have a comparison with the new ones which are also quite colorful and have their own kind of style just stepping out of the way for some bikes and just in case you're wondering um, it is allowed to have the bikes here but of course it makes for more traffic on the pavement there's another uh, smaller building to be a residence network there for people who live in the area. These buildings often have that kind of community uh, community centers and things like that built in and then very conveniently parking so everyone will have in the cars and motorbikes a reader and a card that will let you access those parking lots and the cost is not a lot at all for the uh, that kind of uh, parking so I think quite often if I just quickly park somewhere I'll find it's like almost nothing for a motorbike and here we are at the temple and the interesting thing about this temple is that when this area was built um, they had to move a lot of different temples in the area that was sort of getting replaced by the residential area, the residential buildings. They had to get all of those together and form one bigger temple for the area. Um, so this is actually a combination of many different temples thank you that was a lady just waiting for me to uh, get a picture of the dragon so Inside there you will have shrines which will be for these different different temples, different deities that were worshipped or I don't know if that's the right word, but were central for those temples in this area. I think it's either 12 or 13 temples that were combined in this one place. I actually want to get a view of the entrance here. So I'll walk a little bit back just to show you the gate. Some really beautiful dragons on there this uh, dragon statue or the dragon that goes around here is 270 meters long so fairly impressive dragon that one And here's a information board for the uh, heritage trail that includes the temple. 
So that's showing from the 1950s, the oldest temple that's part of the cluster that moved here. And so this temple came to be after like very long discussions about how to put it all together. I think it's uh, from 92. So it's been here for a fair bit now. It's certainly very uh, colorful. I'm kind of hidden between these pillars. If you don't know that it's here, then you might not really come here to see it either. It's a really a beautiful place to visit. So as we keep going through here, and walking past residential buildings, we'll get to uh, Tampines Avenue 4. And I guess with the temple, that brings us back to the way many of the residential neighborhoods were built. So they are usually areas that way back used to be, first of all, some kind of a nature areas. Just drop something. Um, and then eventually became plantations. At least that's often the case. And while they already had industry or people living here, it was decided they'll be developed into these kind of hubs and residential areas. And that's true for this area as well. It used to be covered in forests and swamps. And it used to be a military training area until around 1987. And that's kind of why these areas have such specific kind of looks on the streets. Um, and you can find things like the temple there that was just basically combined from what was already in the area, but needed to be included into the plan and uh, sort of fit it in.
So here we are at Avenue 4 now. And that will take us a little bit more into town, I guess, from the mostly residential parts. It's just waiting for this light now, for the light cycle. So that's Tampany Street 21. That we were walking. And so the temple on. And Avenue 4 will take us to uh, the shopping centre or mall and then um, eventually to our company's hub which is the big shopping mall and uh, community centre. A lot of these areas tend to have some kind of a hub often around transport links, MRT stations. So the oldest road in this area, Tampanese Road, apparently dates back to as far back as 1864, even though what you see today doesn't necessarily seem like that. There's the company's one, which is also a shopping center. Then at the back you can see the MRT. And we're waiting for another light here. So that's the company's mall that we'll be walking past in a moment. We go. The uh, oh, delivery uh, person had a nice bike 
someone was asking about. There she goes. <laughs> So, I guess most MRT stations in Singapore will have some kind of a shopping center or shopping around it. But then you come out into one of those shopping centers. So there's the MRT over there. And then around it you have these uh, shopping centers. And that's now uh, Tampanese Station, which is different from the Tampanese East that we were at earlier. There is a little skate park here that I actually saw from the bus on my way here as well. These are for the MRT line. The bridges that we're going under. We're coming to Tampanese Mall now. Definitely a lot of people crossing over there. another fairly long light cycle here. So this is more of a shopping center experience here and then 
the companies, our company's hub has a lot of uh, other functions as well. It has a football stadium, football field inside. It has a library. So it has that interesting uh, combination of uh, supposedly quite library and uh, football games in the evening. It also has a lot of restaurants and uh, a space to uh, have concerts and uh, even shows and movies. So you can often see people just uh, watching something there. Let's look at the quite busy mall, Sunday, Saturdays, that people would be out and about. I guess so, it's, it's not seeming super crowded, but definitely not empty either. at Century Square. And the one thing you cannot avoid to slide. Not much you can do about the light cycle though. But I guess it does give these uh, residential central fields that feel that it's not really uh, so convenient to walk around them. It's convenient to walk probably from your house to uh, whatever the hub is, the central part of town. but not so convenient just to uh, keep walking around it. So you can see this area is a lot busier than where we started. We're more in the central areas now. And it does have that feeling of being its own town in a way, its own city almost. Of course Singapore doesn't have any cities, but you can almost think of these areas if you look around and just think about how many people live in these residential areas. 
and around these hubs. It's not completely that far-fetched to think of them as uh, small towns and sm small cities. And the head of us is now our company's hub, which uh, houses the football field, restaurants, a lot of uh, sports facilities for uh, all kinds of exercise classes, dance classes, the library. It's a really interesting building. And also that kind of, uh, those community spaces where people can, uh, I'm gonna make a run for it. Just don't want to wait for another one. So, I think there's actually an excess class going on right there. Behind there is the football field and uh, actually on top of this building you have a running track. It's a very interesting, uh, interesting building. And in a little bit we'll turn to street 82. And uh, make our way towards the park. little bit of bike traffic there if you wondered why I'm stopping So that football field is actually used by a few clubs here, but I guess the company's Rovers FC would be the main one that comes to mind. And this is now uh, Company Street 82. There is the indoors facility there for sports. Doesn't show up so well. I guess it's darker inside.
another unique looking uh, HTP building, at least in my eye. And the hub here in the middle is quite impressive. It's on many levels. And as you can see, we've been walking around it for a bit now. It's all quite new spaces. It's quite nice to spend time in. The one complaint that I do have is that the food stores are not well marked. And guide it. So if you're looking for something specific, most of the time in Singapore it's easy to find. All of the stalls or restaurants will have, inside these shopping malls, they'll have the floor number. And then they'll have the stall number, which goes in order. But it's a little bit more confusing here at the hub. There are some mid-autumn festival decorations over here as well. And to end this walk, we'll go over, walk over to uh, Tampanese Central Park. And uh, there's one thing this park is well, well known for. If you look on the map, you'll find pictures. We'll he head over to have a look and end around there. There's a pool also at the hub. So most HDB buildings there. Government. So these government supported buildings. <laughs> Most of those won't have a pool, but they often have one close by. This is kind of the thing that the park is known for. Got these fruit shaped uh, play crowns, watermelon, and others, I believe, as well. Just quite fun. <laughs> And then large areas for 
a stage, and some playing fields and things, and at the back there the hub. So I think that's where uh, I'll end this walk. I hope you've enjoyed this walk around Tampanese neighborhood from Tampanese East MRT to the Chinese temple and uh, to the shopping centers, our Tampanese hub at the background there and then here to the park. If you'd like to see more of these walks, then you probably know what to do. You can subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and uh, find out when there are new walks published. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you for joining me today for a Sunday walk and I hope I'll see you again soon. <laughs>